Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 17 of the chapter Solutions. We were discussing colligative properties and in the previous couple of videos I was telling you about the relative lowering of vapor pressure. The second colligative property that we would be studying in this video is the elevation in boiling point. But before I really discuss this property, let me remind you what a colligative property is. A colligative property is a property of a solution which depends on the quantity of solute that has been added to it. It does not depend on the nature of the solute added to it. And the first example of it that we studied was the relative lowering of vapor pressure. Let me just revise that a little bit because this second property is actually related to that first one. Any liquid at any temperature on the surface of the liquid the molecules that occupy the surface of the liquid some of the molecules they gain they have more kinetic energy and when they have more energy than the remaining molecules and so much energy that they can escape the attractive forces in the liquid state those molecules from the surface escape as vapors at any temperature the vapor pressure now when they escape if it's a closed vessel then they would exert a pressure if this vessel was closed, the vapors that rise, they would exert a pressure on the liquid and on the walls of the container. That pressure is known as vapor pressure. And the vapor pressure is a fixed value for every liquid at a certain temperature. Now, what is the difference between vapor pressure or vapor and the process of boiling? Or rather, how would you differentiate between the processes of evaporation, which causes the formation of vapor, and boiling? As I told you, evaporation or vaporization is a process that takes place on the surface. Now, what happens as you keep increasing the temperature, more and more molecules gain more and more energy. Now, the molecules at the surface, as they keep gaining more energy, the ones that have more energy, which can break free from the liquids, keep rising in the form of vapors. And therefore, what would you expect if you increase the temperature of a liquid? As you increase the temperature of a liquid, the vapors, the rate at which vapors rise will increase and therefore the vapor pressure would increase. Right? Now, I am not, right now, I'm not talking about the relative lowering of vapor pressure. That is the property which was dependent on, which was a colligative property. I'm talking about evaporation. So, evaporation is a surface phenomenon where the molecules on the surface of a liquid, they evaporate or they escape in the form of vapors. Now, as you keep on increasing the temperature of the liquid, a temperature comes at which the vapor pressure, if let us say there was no lid on this, on this uh, beaker, and let us say that the temperature we go on increasing and more and more liquid or more and more molecules escape in the form of vapors. At a certain point, the pressure, the atmospheric pressure acts as a roof. It is the atmosphere is pushing the molecules downwards. The atmospheric pressure is pushing it downwards and the vapor pressure is pushing upwards. So that temperature at which the vapor pressure which kept on increasing, it increases so much that it becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure. A point will come where the vapor pressure would become equal to the atmospheric pressure. That is, the pressure with which the vapors are pushing upwards becomes equal to the pressure of the atmosphere pushing downwards. What does this result in? This results in evaporation was happening only on the surface because the molecules which were down here could not escape from the liquid in the form of vapors because the surface of the liquid had atmospheric pressure which was pushing the surface down and those molecules were trapped but the moment the pressure above the liquid becomes equal to atmospheric pressure the vapor pressure and the atmospheric pressure become equal the effect becomes zero because the pressure with which it is pushing upwards is equal to the pressure with which the atmosphere is, atmosphere is pushing downwards. So at this point, the surface no longer exists. The surface stops. The surface was existing because of the pressure from the atmosphere. So now, at this temperature, what do we notice? We notice that bubbles from the bottom of the liquid also start rising. 
that is molecules that turn into the vapor from form even at the bottom of the beaker will start rising and will start escaping so when boiling occurs the entire liquid it starts bubbling and even from the bottom the molecules which have higher energy can escape in the form of vapors and at that point the surface does not exist and that temperature at which the vapor pressure becomes equal to atmospheric pressure is known as the boiling point and this phenomenon where the molecules in the vapor state can rise even from the bottom of the jar in a liquid is known as boiling so now we understand what is boiling and what is vapor or evaporation then we studied the first colligated property that when you add a solute the surface some of the surface is occupied by the molecules of the solute so the surface area available to the solvent molecules decreases as a result of which the vapor pressure of the solution is always lesser than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent and this colligative property is known as the relative lowering of vapor pressure it is relative to the original uh, vapor pressure of the pure solvent so we did the raoult's law and if you do not understand what i am telling you i would encourage you to watch the previous two videos this will be clear to you so now that we know that what is evaporation and what is uh, boiling point if the vapor pressure is decreased as a result of the presence of a solute you know vapor pressure and boiling point when the vapor pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure at that point boiling occurs and if due to the presence of a solute the vapor pressure is decreased obviously you will have to heat it more and more so as to escape more and more molecules so that they become their pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure so the presence of a solute if it decreases the vapor pressure of the solution how would it affect the boiling point it would lead to the increase in boiling point why this is a graph that is made here this was the solvent its boiling point and this is the temperature on the x axis let us say the boiling point of the sol solvent was tb not right now when you add the solute to it adding the solute de it decreases the vapor pressure if it decreases the vapor pressure now the vapor pressure has to be increased even more in order to become equal to the atmospheric uh, pressure so you have to give more and more you the substance would have boiled at temperature tb but now you have to provide since the vapor pressure went down the vapor pressure is not equal to atmospheric pressure anymore so you need to give it more heat to bring it to temperature tb now when the solution comes to temperature tb at that temperature the solution the vapor pressure of the solution becomes equal to one atmosphere so the solution boils at a higher temperature or that is the colligative property that the presence of a solute results in the increase or the elevation in the boiling point of the uh, solvent or the solution on the whole the whole solution starts boiling at a higher temperature so this is this also depends only on the number of molecules of solute and not on the nature of the solute it is only because of the number of the concentration of the solution decides how much of elevation in boiling point would take place and that is the reason why we call it a colligative property having understood this let me just now read what i had written about it boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure adding a solute lowers the vapor pressure and therefore at if the vapor pressure is lowered it increases the boiling point that is why in this graph you can see that the boiling point of the pure solvent was lower but when you added solute to it the boiling point of the solution was higher and the difference between the two boiling points will give you the elevation or the increase in the boiling point the elevation in boiling point or the increase would be the difference between these two temperatures and since it is an increase it should be a positive value and tb is higher than t not b therefore the increase would be what would be the formula delta t would be equal to tb minus tb not so elevation of boiling point also depends only on the concentration and not on the nature of the solute therefore it is a colligative property 
Now we have found that one molar when you, when you talk it depends only on the concentration. So by convention we choose molality to be the unit when we are talking of the concentration of a solution when we are talking of the elevation in boiling point. So one molar solution of sucrose what does one molar mean that there is one mole of sucrose present in one kg of water. So one molar solution of sucrose boils at 373.52 Kelvin. We know that the boiling point of water, pure water is 373.15 Kelvin. But when you add one mole sucrose to 1000 grams or 1 kg of water, the boiling point increases. There's an elevation in boiling point. And now the temperature becomes, the boiling point becomes 373.52 Kelvin. So there's an elevation in boiling point. If T naught B is the boiling point of the solvent, T naught B is the boiling point of the pure solvent and T B is the boiling point of the solution, then what would delta T B be? As I explained it to you, delta T B would be equal to T B minus T B naught. That is T B minus T B naught. The higher temperature is T B, lower temperature is T B naught. And therefore the elevation or the increase which should have a positive value we put it like this that the difference between the two will give you how much the magnitude and by putting TB first and TB not later you get the correct sign convention that is it's a positive value that much has increased so Delta TB is equal to TB minus TB not Delta TB is proportional to the molar concentration of the solute that is, it depends on the molality of the solute in the solution. So it is molar concentration of solute for dilute solutions. This is, it depends on the molality of the solute in dilute solutions. So the elevation in boiling point, that is delta Tb, is proportional to small m, which is molality. So when we remove the sign of proportionality, we get that delta Tb is equal to, we add the constant of proportionality which is Kb into M. Now Kb is a value which is known as the boiling point elevation constant. It is also called the molar elevation constant or it is called the ebullioscopic constant. Call it anything. But this constant also has a fixed value for different uh, solvents. And it, we know when you put this or the molality, it varies in as a fraction of or as a function of this value Kb. It varies as a function of this constant which is Kb. Now what is molality? Molality we know is the number of moles of a solute present in 1000 grams or 1 kg of the solvent. So for molality, how do we calculate the formula? That it is the number of moles of solute. We know if the weight of or the mass of the solute is given by W2, if W2 is the mass of the solute, then M2 is the molar mass of the solute. So number of moles, it is, what is molality? It is number of moles, number of moles of solute, of solute, that is N2 in 1000 grams of solvent, right? So let us say, how do you calculate number of moles? Number of moles is mass upon molar mass. So if W2 is the mass of the solute, whatever in number of grams, upon its molar mass in of N2, in how much if this is let us say this is the number of moles present in w1 grams of the solvent in w1 grams of the solvent you have w2 upon m2 number of moles of the solute then in one gram of the sol solvent you will have this upon w1 and in 1000 grams how much would you have into 1000 that gives us this formula do you see? That is nothing but this formula. How do you calculate molality? Molality is the number of moles of the solute which is given by W2 upon M2. And this much is present in W1 grams of the solvent, therefore W1. In W1 grams, W2 upon M2 is present. So in 1 gram, it will be upon W1 and in 1000 grams of the solvent, it will be into 1000. 
So this is the formula for molality. Why did we find this? Because we will substitute this formula here for molality. So delta Tb becomes equal to Kb into whatever is the value of molality, how you calculate molality. So it will become Kb into W2 upon N2 into 1000 upon W1. Now, having known this, you can, if you have the values of other things, you can rearrange it and also calculate the molar mass of the solute. You can calculate the molar mass of the solute simply from this formula if you have the other values. So the increase in boiling point can be calculated experimentally. Let us say you do not know what the solute is, but you know what is the mass of the solute which has been added. So and you add it to pure water, 1000 grams of pure water. So we know the boiling point of water. So we will check the boiling point of the solution and if we know the boiling point of the solution, we can calculate delta Tb. From this you have delta Tb, you know the mass of uh, water, that is 1000 grams that you took and you have the mass of the solute that you added to it and Kb from this you see and Kb is the value of the solvent that is given to you, you can calculate the molar mass of the solute. And if you know the molar mass of the solute, you usually can guess what the solute is. So this is how you can twist whatever the formula in order to get the information that you want. So this was the second colligated property that is elevation of boiling point. In the next video, we'll solve a few problems, a numerical problems based on this before moving ahead to the next colligated property. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.